Right, here we go. I'm going to show you how to create what I call pooling cluster, which is a border that's very, very easy and simple to do. That's two colours, and that's lilac and peacock green, which basically I put the luster on, stipple it on, and then drop thinners on it to pool it, to create a pooled area. So I'll show you on here. Right, clean brush. Make sure your brush is clean and dump it off. That's just luster thinners. And I've got a tile here, and I've actually written on uh, the names of the colours I'm going to use so that if I forget, because they both look similar, or they can do. I can't remember if these are both brown, but some of them are greeny. Right. And I don't go straight onto the wear. And I'm using lilac first, the pale colour first, because that's the prettiest. And it doesn't matter if you get too much of that on. If it's a warm day, move quite quickly. And just do so much at a time. If you've got a large object, only do so much because it can start to dry off on you. And the fresher it is when you put it on, when you want to pull it, the easier it will distort and you can drape it down. And this is moving very quickly, so I'll just do half the vase. Random. Leaving an area here and there where I can put in another colour. And that could actually drape down. In fact, you can create quite dense areas. That's probably enough of that. There we go. Right, so, lilac brush at the back. This brush is going to be for peacock. So, take that off and put that one back on. Otherwise, you can end up putting your brush back in the wrong colour. Righty ho. This is peacock green. Clean brush, this is actually a squirrel brush which is quite soft and nice to use. So put it on there. This one, this colour dries actually quite quickly. Um, smooth it out a bit and just stipple in. Doesn't matter if the colours clash, they're going to clash even more by the time I've finished. And make sure you fill in some of the gaps, but when we come to distort it and pull it, uh, it will disperse it and fill in any gaps. Right, that's not too so bad. Do you always have to use obviously colours that are compatible? Yes, um, blues, greens, shades of pale green, darker green, even mother of pearl will work in really good and it will uh, create some lovely shades with mother of pearl in too. But if you're using sort of orange colours, you've got to be careful what you put with that or else it uh, can create a, a reaction. Some colours just don't like each other. Right, I think, oh let's bring that one right down. Right, so we've got quite a rough area which looks really not very good at the moment, but by the time we've distorted it and created some effects it should look a bit better when it's fired. Right, brush goes down. Now I'm going to use a very tiny brush. If you use too big a brush, it'll distort it too much and run too much. So a tiny brush. And the quicker you move, if you leave that for too long, it goes really hard and it's very hard to distort. So the sooner you do it, the easier it distorts and pulls. So this is uh, luster thinners, just a little drop here and there. And as you put it on, you can leave it to react. What you've got to watch on a vase is that it doesn't obviously run down too much, so keep it reasonably flattish and you can probably see that it is actually starting to distort. Now what can happen is that as it pools, it can collect and go too thick. The luster can pull outwards and create a rim, rather like that's doing there. And if it goes too heavy, I usually re-pool it again maybe dry the brush off and re-soften and that is to stop the luster from going too thick and too heavy and possibly burning off. So I'm just gently teasing it down and creating just a pretty, a little bit like wisteria I suppose. And as you pull and re-pull, now then, that's going to go on there, it shows up quite well on there. And as you move across the colours, 
you, you end up pulling the colours together. So you create shades of lilac, um, darker shades, more purpley shades. And if you have a stronger colour, like a pink, you get some really lovely purpley tones. But this will just create a very delicate look. Right. Now you can, can you see like that area there where it's gone quite pale? But I can make that, you think there's not much colour there, but there actually is. And if you repool it, it will go even more delicate. So if you think it's created a large splodge, which you don't like the look of, like that's run there because of the shape of the vase, just go back and gently repool it with just tiny touches of luster and then tease it down to suit. Now then we're nearly. So if you do one side of the vase, you can match this up very easily when you're going round something. Um, and if you're on a plate, you can really do large areas, large pooled areas and create something out of it at a later date. No, then. Does it thought... matter if it runs? If it does, say, all right, okay, here's a big, you know, you've put too much on and it's going to run right down. And, and really, and you think, oh, it's gone too low on the vase. What I would do, a bit of tissue, a bit of spit, and bring it back. And then just dry it off, dab it off. And if necessary, tiny touch of thinners. And if that's dried up, a little bit of that will loosen it up, and you can put a little bit more colour back on. And then just a little bit more carefully next time, repool it so that it doesn't run too far but you can take it back and when it, that's dried off now but if I spread it a little I suppose I should fire this really so that you can see how it turned out right that's more or less I would say pooled and distorted uh, but you've got to stand back doing something like that and the mistake I've made I've nearly got four fingers so Therefore, if that was the case, I would make that a little bit longer and perhaps pull up something down in between, a little bit shorter, and bring that down a little bit more so that they were more random. There we go. I think that's probably enough. So that you're creating a nice drapey, like it was flowers really. Um, you could just imagine that being um, wisteria because once you fired that, if you wanted, you could actually put enamel on top of that and create little soft effects. On one of the vases I did like that, I did that with enamel on the top, on a second firing, and then sprinkle glass on the top. So tell us about temperature, you, what, what would you do with the enamel and what would you do with the... Right, for this temperature, this is on porcelain, so you could probably go anything up to 800. If you know your colours. Fine, if you don't, you have to do a test. But the pinks and the blues, they're pretty good. Pale blue can sometimes turn pink if it's turned, if it's fine too high. Um, or is it pink that turns blue? I know one, you've just got to be careful and do a quick test time, which is what I would do if I wasn't sure. On bone china, ooh, 760. Anything between 755 to 765. And then the enamel? Um, I use an enamel which is fade goods, which is uh, easy to use on top of this and it will fire quite low as well as quite high. And I would keep the enamel about, if I was working on bone china, you can't go above the temperature that you've already used for your luster mm. in case it distorts it or changes the colour. So I would do it about 760, something like that. It will work quite successfully on the top. If you put enamel, some enamels on top of pale blue, it can go pink around the enamel which can actually look quite pretty, but maybe not what you want, so you've got to be careful sometimes. But if you're working on luster, if you find that to about 780, something like that, I'd do the enamel at about 770. Hmm. Yeah, so that I would complete around the other side. And another step further on that, if you wanted to, would be to add some little leaves in there, in perhaps just pale green or something like that, to drape through randomly, uh, or even a butterfly. Rather like this on the other piece, which this is the one that's got the butterfly on. That looks like 
a jumbo jet coming into oh, that and right in the room. <laughs> it rather came out quite well. Now, I couldn't be bothered wiping it off in all honesty, so I ended up being it on. So the shape's all right, but what is wrong is the design. It's going straight up, and it shouldn't do so. But that will fire like that. Um, that's porcelain, and that was fired at 7.65, actually, that. So and the butterflies were luster? Yes, done with a square shader. Um, if you want right, okay, should we do a quick... We've got time. Let's see, let's go for it. Okay, I'll loosen that up. And I, what I've actually done, you can actually put a bit of um, spike lavender. Right, mix the colour together and that should go a little bit mauve. Right, watch this space. Is it going to turn out? We'll see. Right. Like that. Small square shader. May not come out very well, but you can pan into the one on the other one. And then... Snow Queen is nervous. That is actually quite rubbishy, but I'm going to just bring that out a little bit more. And you can see that you and I don't get it right every time. But the method uh, is there, just the painting is rubbish. There we go. Bring that down. We'll have a little, and then press that off a little bit. And if we've got time, I would actually just wipe into it a little bit. That gives you some highlights. Not very good, but you get the method. And that's really all that matters, isn't it? Because if you fire it, you can add a little bit more colour on that, just to. Right, well, that's got me... A butterfly. But they look how pretty the ones are. Right, so we need a little body. I wish I had a little body, but... <laughs> Don't you? Right, okay. Tiny brush. Put that in. And pull it through while it's still damp. On there, press that off. And take a little highlight on there. And we've got a rough shape on there. It is very rough, I might add, but at least you can see. Now, what you can do is add a couple of antennae on up and, and that way. Could do with a better brush, but at least you get the idea. Okay, 